going on guys? In today's video we're going to go over some boondocking essentials. Uh, right now we are camped out on Lake Santitla in North Carolina in the Smoky Mountains. I believe that's how you say it, Santitla. That's what it looks like. Anyways, we've been out here for about a week and it's been raining every single day. So we're going to take advantage of the downtime today and do a boondocking essentials video. Luckily we're staying dry under the bat wing tarp. It's keeping the firewood nice and dry as well. So let's get started. What's up, buddy? All right, so first and foremost, water. That's our uh, six gallon drinking water tank. We basically just take this thing to town and fill it up at the little RO water stations. Most grocery stores will have them, Walmarts, or even like the mom and pop shops in the smaller towns will have them. We've got another five gallon tank up in here for the sink water, so if we use five gallons for doing things like dishes, Andrea's over here cooking eggs for her salad whipping it up uh, but anyways yeah the five gallons in there is strictly for cleaning dishes and like washing our hands things like that so our six gallons of drinking water is strictly drinking water which is nice and I would highly suggest that system it seems to be a pretty universal system for most everybody that travels on the road it's just easy because most towns have the machines and keep it all in one little tight spot I mean that that's nice and slim up against our wall doesn't really intrude on in the walking way so highly suggested on that and just in case we need to use something like a lake or some kind of creek for fresh water, this is our little Sawyer water filter. You can basically use any water source, fill it up in a average size water bottle, and then this side screws onto the cap of the water bottle, and that's like a straw up top. So this thing is nice to have on hand. It's also like a nice uh, survival kind of tool to have. How's that salad? <laughs> so obviously water is probably number one most important thing to have for survival uh, but other than that you're gonna want power especially if you're living off-grid full-time uh, you're gonna want to power your lights and whatever other things you might need to charge cameras cell phones whatever so behind me here is our solar panel the bags completely torn up but it's been on the road with us for a while so I kind of didn't expect it to really stand up too well but the solar panel does its job and it uh, it powers our let me see if I can show you this down here. There we go, nice and bright. All right, sorry, it's a little bit of a mess down here right now. It's kind of my quick access for tools and things. But this is our 215 amp hour AGM. Uh, I believe it's Full River. Yeah, Full River. I got this guy on Amazon. I'll leave the link below if you want to check that out. But it'll power us off grid for about two weeks. And that's always more than we need. So if you consider yourself low power usage, which we kind of do, and that's pretty much just using the lights inside the living space and charging a few accessories like cameras and phones and maybe a laptop every now and then, um, this battery was well worth the investment. I would definitely give it a look on Amazon. Uh, it'll last you probably about two weeks on average without charging it once, so that's always nice. So if you plan on full-time boondocking like we do, uh, most places that you'll be staying allow you to stay about 14 days on average and that's uh, National Forest Service land, BLM land, uh, most public lands will allow 14 days. So having a battery that lasts those full 14 days where we don't have to go to a campground and pay for a hookup or drive somewhere to get sunlight, uh, those are the kind of investments that are going to save you down the line on a monthly basis. Uh, if you're just a weekend boondocker, you really don't have to put too much thought into it. Most batteries will give you a weekend's worth of power. Um, but definitely if you plan on doing full-time boondocking, having a nice battery is pretty much the heart of the whole operation. The next essential is geared towards the full-time boondockers once again. Uh, if you're full-timing, you will be going through four seasons and winter is one of them. So you're gonna wanna stay warm when it's freezing outside or snowing. I mean, you don't wanna die in the cold, that would suck. So. We went with the G-Stove. This thing keeps us nice and warm. I think it's, let me see. 84 degrees in here right now. I think it's about mid thirties outside. So this thing is super nice. We cook on top of it. That's what Andrea just cooked the eggs on top of. And uh, throw a nice fat wet log in there overnight and it'll burn for a pretty long time while we sleep. I've got it roaring in there right now. That's why it's nice and cozy in here. I've got the wood stove fan on top and that basically just moves air all around and gets it out of my little fireplace area and back over there to the beautiful lady on the bed. <laughs> so 
So if you plan on full timing, I would highly suggest getting a wood stove in your setup. Uh, another option you can do for heat is propane. Um, you can use propane to do something like a little buddy heater. Uh, those things are cool. We just figured for the same space that it took up, we could install a wood stove and also get a cooking space as well. And we've loved it so far because we've always got a fire going in the winter. So we've always got a hot surface to cook on without having to pull out the stove, the propane tank, and all that kind of shenanigan. Other than heat, I'd say the last essential that I would add into the Boondocking Essentials video would be food. Um, cans are great. I'll just kind of give you a little run around of the food that we have to give you an idea of what works on the road uh, and what works for boondocking really. So this is our cooler. This is like our fridge. It's an Arctic cooler. Uh, Yeti knockoff, if you will. Pretty much the same thing. Works just as well. Um, but that is a batch of beef jerky we just made out at Andrew's grandpa's house and among just average stuff. I mean, we keep most things in bags, that way when the ice melts, it doesn't mess up things like the milk carton. Ooh, that little yellow case back there, I gotta mention that. It is $1.50 at Walmart, and it is the best investment for a traveling cooler you will ever make, because you'll never crack another egg. And overhead, we've got a couple more cabinets of food storage up here. Got basic things like pancake mix and dry food storage containers over here. If you saw my first video, you know how I roll with chocolate. Big ass bar, still doing that thing. And over here we've got some canned food, more dry storage. If you eat refried beans, you gotta try this one, Rosarita. And back on this side of the camper, behind our motivational quote of the day, we've got some more food storage. And once again, dry food, if you uh, notice the pattern here, dry food goes a long way. And just basic condiments and more canned food, plates, silverware. And uh, this is what it looks like in here when Andrea starts making jewelry. So ladies, if you like jewelry, please go to her Etsy at, let me see if I can zoom in on this thing. There's her card, Stoned Darling. Look her up on Etsy and get some of this jewelry off the bed so I can sit down, please. In my defense, we're fixing the table. So it's that we are, we are. We're gonna, we're gonna transform this again to where we can turn these two benches into seats and raise the table up, because there's a table under there. We just never use it, so. Once we get down to Florida, we're gonna throw the leg back on that table and reupholster the whole bed and everything and turn that back into a table, because that would be nice and efficient. Also, underneath Andrea's takeover over here, uh, under this bench and the bench over here as well, we have another essential to boondocking, which is pretty much just survival gear, and that's, you know, emergency candles and blankets, um, I think we've got ropes and all kinds of just anything you can think of survival. Her grandfather just has everything in a big barn, so he, he lent us a bunch of stuff. So that pretty much sums up just about everything you'll need in a boondocking setup. Uh, food, water, power, heat, and survival gear. I think that was all five, five of them. Five things you need to know to start boondocking. So there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, Please click like and subscribe. Every little subscription means a lot to me. So thank you guys who subscribe to me. And uh, you'll follow along on our journey along the way. We're still hippity hopping all around the USA. Might go down south, might go up north to Canada. We don't know yet. Every day is a new day and pretty much, what's one of those travel quotes? Give me a travel quote. Um, Quick, travel quote. Um, um, um. Go where the path, <laughs> what is that like? <laughs> Go where there is no path and leave a path. <laughs> Unless you're hiking, then don't leave a path. Just tread lightly and be nice to the plants. All right, bye.